Welcome back to another edition of the Educational AD Podcast. We couldn't do these without the incredible support of our sponsors, and we want to start by saying thank you to all of them. First, thanks to our diamond sponsor, Varsity Brands, including VSN, Varsity Spirit, and Herc Jones. Varsity Brands, elevating student experiences in sport, spirit, and achievement. We also want to thank our platinum sponsors, Ephesus Lighting, innovating a brighter future at every level. Gilman Gear, always a step ahead. Camp Mobile, where teams communicate better. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. And Vital Signs, bring student achievements to life. Thanks to all of our great sponsors. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest today is Peggy Brown. She's a certified master athletic administrator, and she's the director of athletics at Divine Savior Holy Angels High School in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Peggy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jake, for having me. Really happy to be here. Uh, well, we're excited. Uh, you know, we only have the best on here. So, <laughs> Well, thanks for that. <laughs> Well, as you know, uh, the life of an athletic director is uh, very busy, and this is uh, certainly no exception. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, um, where you went to school and college, and, and maybe how that love of sports led to your first uh, teaching and coaching position. Well, I was born in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I am one of six children to my wonderful parents, and I am the third oldest, and I would like to be deemed the attention-seeking middle child. Um, and anybody that's a middle child kind of knows that, like, hey, I'm here, look at me, <laughs> don't let me get lost in the pack. Um, but anyways, my dad was an excavator, owned his own business, and my mom raised six kids, and so, um, we're kind of a sport family now way back then long time ago you know everybody just played one sport and a season and you didn't have all the club things or things like that so um you know we played what we could and also i hate to admit but you know i was that child that just made it in to title nine so i was kind of one of those first uh women that got to play sports so I think it, um, I was in maybe about seventh or eighth grade was the time where we actually got to play some sports. And I went to St. Joe's Middle School in Waukesha and played volleyball and then um, basketball and softball. And I really loved it. And I hate to look back on this and say this out loud, but you know, when you were growing up, all girls wanted to do was be a cheerleader because that's all that was offered. There really weren't sports. So you grew up and you wanted to be a cheerleader and you know my older brother played football and so that was kind of the aspiration until I started playing in like seventh and eighth grade and I really loved it. So I went to Catholic Memorial High School in Waukesha and um, I played volleyball. I made the volleyball team. I also made the cheerleading squad and um, then I also played softball and I really loved all three. I really enjoyed um, being able to do all three. I don't know that people can do that now because they're kind of separated. You know, if you're a cheerleader, you're a cheerleader, you can't play volleyball and do all that. Um, so from there, I took my love of sport uh, to the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse uh, where I played softball and I majored in physical education and health education. And then from there, I went um, on and did my internship my senior year at Catholic Memorial where I went to high school. So I did an internship in um, physical education and health. And then I also coached um, volleyball, downhill ski, <laughs> and also helped with softball. So that, that's kind of where, where it led me. Um, so hopefully. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. Well, I'm sure you spent a few years, um, you know, at your old school. Uh, tell us about that transition from, 
teacher and coach into athletic administrator? Um, yeah, it, that was interesting to go back and teach at your high school. And I was just there the year for a year. And um, so I did my internship in the first semester and then second semester just stayed on and taught um, part time. And then it was interesting because it was really difficult to call my teachers by their first names and, you know, that whole dynamic. Um, but I will have to say, in the meantime, I was looking for jobs because they didn't have anything permanent um, from there. So my first teaching job was at University School Milwaukee, um, which was a small, independent, private school. And actually, the football coach, Coach Bill Young, who's really world famous at Catholic Memorial, really helped me get that job. He was like, come on, Siegs, we're gonna get you that job. Um, and so he really made the contacts for me and, and actually helped me get my first job there. Um, so I went to university school, Milwaukee after that, and gosh, I coached JV and varsity volleyball, JV and varsity basketball, um, did downhill or yeah, uh, softball there too, and track and field. So, um, you know, it, it kept me really busy and I loved it. And through all of that, um, you know, I had kind of worked with the athletic director at Cath Memorial and then at university school had worked with Lowell McDonald there. And he was just a phenomenal uh, person to coach for and I learned a lot from him. But, and I always thought, yeah, I might like to do that someday, but he was gonna be there forever. And my thought too, I was gonna be there forever, but that didn't happen because <laughs> then in my fourth year at USM, um, I got married in March. And in June, my husband found an ad in the paper for an athletic director at Divine Savior Holy Angels. You know, because back then, everybody placed ads in the paper for coaches and teachers and athletic directors. So I had no intention, but I thought, well, you know, I'll just go in and interview because it doesn't hurt to interview. So I went in to, we call it DSHA. I went into DSHA and interviewed and they offered me the position on the spot. And I, I just wasn't really prepared for that, but really sat down and talked about it and thought about it. And it really was something I had thought about doing. Um, and I thought I would love it, um, but didn't know anything really about it. So I took the job and then 33 years later, here I am still here because when I'm all in on something, I'm really all in. And so um, I absolutely love it here. I don't know if you know, it's an all girls Catholic high school. So I, I really get to help girls, you know, with all the, all the love of sports that I have and pass that on to them and, and just see them grow. So I love it. Oh, that's great. What a great story. And obviously, you, you know, you've uh, made your mark there. Um, we like to talk about leadership. In our profession, uh, we all know that uh, there's mentors that influence along the way. Um, who were some of your mentors, uh, either, you know, teachers or coaches or parents, you know, growing up or people that you worked with uh, or worked for? Um, I would say mentors along the way. I think that started in high school um, with my athletic director at Catholic Memorial, Greg Gamowski. He was there and I used to help like type contracts back when we used typewriters and do some of the little things for him and just kind of got to see what he did. And I thought it was really interesting. So I would say he was a mentor for me. And then next at university school, I would say Lowell McDonald was a great mentor for me. Um, I worked alongside of him with the athletics, but you know, was a coach under him as well. And he really showed me like how to treat people well and treat your coach as well. And so, um, like I said, Lowell was a great influence on me. And then when I came to DSHA, I would say probably my principal, Sister Virginia Honish. Um, when I was hired, like I said, I was like, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but she just really never, never micromanaged me. She let me take the program and run with it in the direction that I wanted. And um, that was, probably the best thing that could have happened because you know the possibilities were limitless you know I could I could really take it wherever I wanted and do with that um, and then I would say 
back in the day in, in our conference, there were boys athletic directors and girls athletic directors. And so I would meet with all the women athletic directors. And I would say they were a great, great influence on me and great mentors because all of them never had the opportunity to play in high school. I was the first female athletic director in that group had actually had got to play high school athletics and actually college. And so, um, but they really taught me a lot about just like, well, this is what you should do and this is how you schedule and all those kind of little things. And it was super comfortable because it was all women. And so, you know, we got, to, I got that great experience from them. Um, and last, I would have to say, like my parents and my husband and eventually my children um, were so supportive of me um, in this profession. I could not be an athletic director without my mother because, you know, I had children. I was married when I first start this and, you know, two years later, I had my first son then four years later, my second. And my mom at the drop of a hat, like I'd call up, mom, I can't get home. Can you just watch the kids? And yes, she would do that. And I, I, it's hard being a woman with children and an athletic director. And sometimes I, I don't know that our male counterparts see that maybe now more um, because men seem to be a little bit more involved in their children's lives. But back then it was, it was not easy and she made it easy for me. Um, and she let me do that. And also my husband, because he didn't expect dinner on the table at five o'clock like my dad did. Um, and so our lives kind of revolved around athletics. You know, the kids would be in the gym and, you know, they always said they wanted to be a dasher. And then I had to tell them that only girls could be dashers. <laughs> and so um, they were around high school girls all their lives. So um, they made a lot of good friends that way too. Um, but like I said, my family is like so supportive of my desire and to fulfill this mission in my life, um, to be an athletic director and helping young women really love athletics and have that opportunity, so. That's a great, great story. Now, I gotta ask questions. Is your husband uh, involved in sports or athletics at all? Well, when we were first married, I was coaching, you know, volleyball and basketball and track and field. And then eventually at DSHA, I was coaching volleyball and softball. Well, he was coaching swimming. So we had a sport like every season we were coaching. Um, and eventually he had to give up the swimming so I could keep doing what I was doing. But yeah, we, he, we both kind of come from that background and he's not in education, um, but he was a coach. And so, you know, it had always been a part of our marriage and our life. So I think that made it easier too. It wasn't like we were married, then I became an athletic director. And, you know, so it was like, we had it figured out from the beginning. So that was helpful. Yeah, uh, my wife is a career teacher and coach. We just finished, uh, you know, our 40th year uh, together. Um, coaching. Oh, uh, we've only been married 37, but uh, we've been coaching <laughs> together longer. Uh, and I, I tell our young coaches, or they'll ask me, you know, geez, how do you do it? And I said, well, you know, you got to make sure your spouse, you know, understands, you know, what it's, uh, what the job entails. And, and she certainly did. So hopefully I was uh, uh, a little bit supportive of her. She was very supportive of me. Um, you know, you've been doing this, we've been doing this for uh, a couple of years now. And, uh, you know, you've been there at uh, Divine Savior for 33 years. I'm curious, um, obviously the job has changed over the years. Um, you know, we have email and technology, which we didn't have when we, we first started out. You talked about using a typewriter. Um, but in looking at your job, uh, how has it changed? Let's just say maybe in the last 10 or 12 years, uh, as far as your daily routine, you know, uh, what's changed for you? Um, let's see. I, you know, my, my first thought of how it has changed is the technology. Um, and that has been a tremendous change. And all the years blend together. So I don't know how long 10 years ago was, <laughs> but I have a funny story if you want to hear it. Let's hear um, it. You know, when I first started, well, when we first started, we didn't even have Xerox machines or copiers. And I look back at that and I'm like, holy cow, how did we ever 
do a job without copy. You know, I make copies all the time. But also when I uh, first started, my, my swim coach was a tech guy. So he was a computer guy and, you know, they had just kind of come out and I wasn't that comfortable and they aren't as, they weren't as easy to use back then as they are now. Not easy, but um, easier. And so one day he's like, Peggy, can you just send me that in an attachment? And I was like, whoa, 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 Kyle, I don't know how to do that. Like, no, I'll just send you, you know, a copy in the mail or whatever. And then a couple of weeks later, I kind of found out how to do an attachment. And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> that I was like, Kyle, I'm really, really sorry. I just didn't know I hit the paper clip and that's how it went on. So, you know, for us that really started off typewriters, fax machines, you know, old computers that really weren't that friendly to use to now it's been a tremendous change. And just learning all of that, I think we need to pat ourselves on the back for doing that, <laughs> being able to learn all that. Um, but yeah, those, those are probably the biggest things that have happened. Um, but I would also say probably the part of the job that's changed is just the offerings, like the number of sports that we have, and especially the number of sports for girls. When I first started, I think we had seven or eight different sports, and now I have 16 different sports with multiple levels at each. And I'm a firm believer in girls especially, they wanna be a part of a team. And so we try really hard to have as many non-cut sports as we can, um, and you know that everybody can participate. Um, we started field hockey, gosh, maybe about 10 years ago. And we thought, oh, if we get 30 girls, we'll be excited. And we had 125 girls sign up to play field hockey. And I was like, where are all these girls coming from? Because we had a pretty big program at the time too. Um, so now we have five teams of field hockey because we made it a non-cut sport. And we wanted something in the fall that they could come and be a part of. Everybody that comes from a Catholic school background plays volleyball because that's all they offer in a Catholic school. And so that's what everybody wants to play when they come here. So we'll have, you know, 50 girls that want to try out for volleyball. And so we have to cut, which I hate doing. And this is a great alternative for them because nobody has really played field hockey before they come here. And so everybody's in the same boat and it's really a good experience. And so that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that has changed with the job is just the number of sports besides the amount of paperwork and the number of coaches and, you know, all those things that we have along the way as well. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree. Uh, you and I are both at, uh, you know, private schools. Uh, and, and so again, our envir environment's a little bit different, but what, uh, if any, changes have you seen in the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years with regards to uh, the parents of the student athlete? You know, that's an interesting question. And I must be really blessed because although parents are probably more involved, certainly more involved than my parents were at the time, I find them to be really supportive here. And I don't know if that comes from the stability in the athletic director position that I've been here for so long. And we really have like protocols and things that need to be respected in terms of how you talk to coaches or um, administrators and things like that. Like, don't jump over my head, talk to me first. And then, you know, if we need to, we'll go to the principal or the president. Um, so I, I would say parents are more involved and rightly so because they, you know, they have a vested interest in their daughters. Um, but I, I would also say they're, at least here at DSHA, I find them to be really supportive and want to help. Um, and we have, don't, don't think that we don't have our share of, you know, maybe parents that you want to wrangle in a little bit. But for the most part, I think we're really blessed here to have great parents. So. Uh, that's great to hear. And, and uh, I would echo that at our school too. I, I think it goes to uh, communicating your mission very strongly. You know, this is what we do, you know, making sure the coaches, you know, follow that. Uh, so the coach isn't hanging you out to dry and uh, just uh, 
uh, again, communicating, listening to a concern, but uh, you know, hey, this is how we do things. So that's good to hear. I'm glad it's going well. Yeah. Um, let's go and talk a little bit about COVID. Uh, certainly it's impacted uh, athletics across the country and we've seen a variety of responses. Uh, some states are uh, changing seasons. Some are moving ahead business as usual. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be a single best practice. So, um, and disclosure, you know, we're recording this, you know, at the end of August. So by the time this airs, things may have changed. But what's happening right now uh, at your school uh, in Milwaukee, uh, in Wisconsin? You know, what's going on with COVID? Yeah, we have a mix of everything in Wisconsin. Um, it depends where you are and what you're doing. Our state is, our organization has left it up to each school. They have offered fall options or they've made kind of this in-between season between winter and spring. They've made another season if you choose to take your fall sports and move them to the spring. Um, so it's, it's a little confusing. Some people have done all their sports to the spring. Some people have done just, let's say, their contact sports like football or boys soccer. And there are a whole, whole bunch of schools trying to do everything in the fall. Um, so far, we're committed to trying to do the fall. Um, we are trying to be as safe as we can. Um, as I said, I've written more guidelines than I have ever have in my life, <laughs> and they constantly change and are updated. Um, but my coaches and student athletes and parents have been really great. Um, so far, we've started what the WIA has termed low-risk sports. So we started cross country, golf, swim and dive, and tennis last week. So we're on our second week and we've also already been competing in tennis and golf. And it has been so exciting um, to watch the girls compete because we lost our spring last year. We actually lost the end of our winter season. Um, we had made it to the state championship, had the team up there to play their first game on a Friday and we're told Thursday night that the tournament was canceled. So that was really hard because I think everybody knows how difficult it is to get to state in basketball. And so we hadn't been there in five years and we were so excited, had a, just an awesome group of seniors that we really felt we had a great chance. They were peaking at the right time, playing great. And they were up there in the hotel rooms, ready to play the next day. And I woke up at five in the morning and um, heard on the news that everything was canceled. <laughs> so it was devastating. But then you go on and you, you are hopeful you get your spring season in and that was completely canceled. So that was even, even worse because at least the winter sports got to play. They just missed out on that last opportunity. So that was really, that was tough. Um, so then, you know, everybody shut down for a long time this summer and, and came July, we were able to start opening up a little bit um, with school approval. And so we ran some open gyms and contact days and um, in pods and really carefully as everybody else around the nation did. And, and it went really well for us and everybody is really su um, you know, successful at that. And so we felt we were ready to move on with the, um, the sports and so far they've been going, going really well. Um, like I said, it's kind of a mix all over the state and we have to declare by September 1st, you know, what we're gonna do. Um, and how we're going to do it. But hopefully everything goes well and they get to have their seasons in because it, it was really a joy to see the girls start to compete in golf and tennis and next week we'll start swimming. Tomorrow we have our first cross country meet. So we're excited. No, absolutely. The kids coming back, uh, you know, they were waiting. I think the parents were waiting too <laughs> to get them out <laughs> of the house. So yeah, fingers crossed. Hope things continue to go well for you. Yeah. Um, this next uh, question, we've been asking it, uh, you know, of our guests all summer, um, and uh, obviously things have changed just a little bit in the last, uh, um, you know, few days. Um, last spring, uh, particularly in Minneapolis, Atlanta, um, we saw just a, a huge uh, increase in, uh, you know, the awareness of 
you know, social issues, social justice, um, and now we've, you know, had the recent events. Uh, my question is this, what are some things that we can do as athletic directors, um, what are some things that we can do better uh, with our students, with our teams, with our communities in this um, area of social awareness? Yeah, I would say, you know, the most important current issue right now we face is that racial injustice and, and diversity. Um, and I truly believe that we have to open the lines of communication and listen to people. I mean, really listen and listen with empathy. Um, I can't understand what it's like to have been raised black in America, but I wanna listen and I wanna understand and I wanna try to be better. So I think um, that we, we all need to listen to each other. And I think that's where it starts. Um, we also need to normalize changing our mind. Um, we may have thought one way for a very long time because we didn't know any better, but now we need to open our minds and be open to change and to know that it's okay to learn and to grow. But that all starts where I think, you know, is listening with empathy and trying to understand and help me understand, you know, like I, I can't, I can't understand because I didn't grow up that way, but please help me to understand and, and help me to become better. And I think if we all start listening to each other and try to understand with empathy that the world would probably be a better place and we can start with our own athletes and go from there. Mm -hmm. well, I appreciate you sharing. Uh, let's lighten it up here a little bit. Uh, I think I probably know the answer, but uh, what are some of your favorite things about being the athletic director at your school? What gets you excited about coming to work each day? Well, I am so blessed to be in a profession that I absolutely love. I love being an athletic director. And the thing I probably love most about it is that it is different every day. Like I come in with a to-do list. I'm a, you know, post-it kind of girl and I put my things down and I love crossing off things, but I'll come in some days and I'll look at the end of the day and be like, whew, I didn't even get to any of those things. So I love that it's different every day. And for me personally, being at an all girls school, I love watching the girls come in as freshmen, not really knowing who they are, you know, not that confident. And by the end of the, the four years when they graduate, I, they turn into just confident, capable young women who really go on to do tremendous things in the world. And I am in awe of their abilities when they leave. So that is so satisfying for me to see them just blossom into who they're meant to be. Um, I also, I love coaching coaches. Um, I love the same thing, seeing them grow, coming in as that first year coach. And then I have some coaches now that have been here, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And to see the growth in them and how they really get, you know, how important and how influential they are. Um, so I love that. And I, I just really love the relationships I formed with student athletes, with my coaches, with my colleagues, officials, game workers. The relationship, you know, piece of this is what makes it so great is you get to meet such great, great people. And um, that's why I just love, I love being an athletic director and I wish everybody had the opportunity because it's a really great job. <laughs> Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, I have, I'll have parents, I'm sure the same, you know, after a basketball game or you're closing down the gym and they'll say, boy, I, I did, hate to have your job. And I said, you got to be kidding me. You know, I, I got the best <laughs> job in the world. You, know, you had to come here and watch your daughter. I got paid to come here, and <laughs> hang out with kids and coaches. Uh, it's the best job in the world. Living the dream. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, Peggy, this has been uh, just wonderful. I've enjoyed visiting with you, and I know our listeners have, but we're not done yet. We always like to wrap up with what we call the athletic director's toolbox. Uh, you're an experienced athletic director, but now your task is to send a brand new AD out on their very first job. But I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. What three items 
are going to go in Peggy Brown's athletic director toolbox? Okay, my first one and is probably the most important, and that is surround yourself with great people. Um, you will rise to the level of those around you. So if you surround yourself with people that are better than you, you are going to rise to that level and, and be better. And I, I don't think there's any greater advice to a new athletic director is find those seasoned athletic directors, make a relationship and get them as part of your inner circle. Um, secondly, second one I would say is to make sure you get involved in your state organization and the national organization. Um, ours is the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association or WADA and the NIAAA. Um, I think those two organizations do so much good and help you so much professionally. And the connections that you make, again, are so important. Um, I always tell new athletic directors in Wisconsin, you need to join the WADA group because you need to form relationships. So if you need something and you have a relationship with that person at that other school, you're likely going to get that game that you want or get the help that you need because you have that relationship. And if you don't, then you kind of flounder. So relationship building in those um, organizations is really important. And the third thing I would say is never expect your coaches to do something you're not willing to do yourself. So for example, if I'm expecting my coaches to um, do professional development, I need to do professional development. If I want them to become certified interscholastic coaches, I better become a certified interscholastic coach so that they see that you know, we're on the same page here that, you know, I'm never going to ask them to do something I wouldn't be willing to do myself. I set up volleyball nets for my coaches for games. I take down benches after games like all of us do. I think that kind of that servant leader is so important for your coaches to see and that I'm, you know, although I'm their boss, I'm there with them um, in the trenches, helping them and, and trying to make their life easier. So those would be my three things that I would suggest to new athletic directors. Well, sound advice, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Sure. Well, as I said, this has just been wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for being on the uh, Educational AD Podcast. Well, thanks, Jake, for having us. It's a, you know, it's a great opportunity and I think you're doing just a great service to the profession. And, um, you know, to everybody in the nation that will hear this. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. It's, it's certainly been a lot of fun. And uh, again, good luck uh, this season with your teams. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the time this uh, airs, um, you know, we'll have a completely different uh, uh, environment going on with our schools and our teams and our sports.